I think it's going to be interesting to see any kind of economic projections that come out of the Fed tonight. Uh, you know, the market clearly uh, has got more optimistic after the jobs report on Friday night with the curve steepening, uh, as we've seen, even though, as you said, some money's come back into the market today. Um, but it's it's very difficult. If you look at uh, company projections, you know, quite, quite a lot, if not most companies have removed their guidance for at least the next quarter or two. So for the Fed to make their economic projections, given the wide range of outcomes, is going to be very interesting watching. And I, I think there's just been a, a huge risk on tone in markets over the last week, uh, week and a half, um, which given the actual underlying economic data uh, puzzles me, I have to say. Given that, do you see the rally then in uh, US Treasury yields uh, continuing as we move throughout the course of the year? Yeah, absolutely, I do. I think uh, you, you want to be fading this sell-off in Treasuries and the steepening of the curve. I think if you look at inflation expectations, they're pretty firmly anchored. And, you know, long-end Treasuries will start to reflect that, I think. Um, I, I don't really see any reason for the huge rally we've had in risk assets over the last week or two in particular. Um, so I, I think that uh, actually with these levels on the 10 and 30-year Treasuries, that actually represents a very good buying opportunity. When you think about this with regards to what we're seeing happening play out in the United States today, obviously um, the Fed has come under a lot of pressure from President Trump in the last couple of years. You know, there's never a dull moment when he's you know, going after Jay Powell. But when you think about this with regards to what we've seen in the market, that terrible disconnect really between what's happening in the real economy versus what's happening uh, in the markets, how worried are you about the Fed really being able to get a handle on this situation in terms of getting ahead of it? Because there's still so much uncertainty. Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, the position is that, you know, the, the Fed is the lender of last resort and they're very much able to solve for an issue of liquidity. But the, the main thing that they're not able to solve for is an issue of solvency. And, you know, we've had a huge liquidity squeeze, which they did solve by expanding their balance sheet hugely and providing that liquidity in the short term. But, uh, you know, in terms of solvency, that always plays out on a more delayed basis and just increased liquidity can't solve those long-term issues. So we, we definitely, I think the Fed did the right thing and they, they had to do what they did and, and basically just lend to everyone everywhere and, and to, to stem the short-term issues. And the hope obviously is that, you know, the economies will reopen, but um, the data is just showing that's not the case. So, you know, if you think GDP declined by about 4% across uh, the, the GFC in 2008-9. And we're thinking, you know, this time that even though it might be a short uh, contraction in GDP, it's going to be maybe as deep as uh, as 8%, um, I think, projected across the year. Um, once you take into account, you know, just the huge numbers that are being thrown around for the Q2 contraction of maybe 40 or 50% in GDP. So um, even if we do get a very quick recovery, the damage to the economy is going to be significantly greater than is priced in at the moment. And that's why I remain bullish on those longer term Treasury yields. No doubt about it. It's going to be interesting to watch this play out, particularly with regards uh, to what's happening in the United States, specifically in the fact that we've got the elections coming up in November. Lots of questions about what that could potentially look like. But in terms of policymakers feeling that real significant squeeze. Are you concerned at all that, you know, we're not going to be moving fast enough in that short term space? Um, because as you say, it's a, it's a liquidity crisis that they're trying to really avoid. Yeah, well, I think what's probably surprised everyone has been the speed of both the sell off and the recovery. Uh, and I think, you know, the Fed in particular were very quick to, for example, cut rates to zero and implement, you know, the full playbook in terms of their their, um, you know, what you might call non-standard lending options in, in terms of lending to these SPVs that are now buying bonds across the credit spectrum. So I think um, having learned the lessons from previous recessions, in particular the, the GFC, you, see, you saw that the Fed actually re responded remarkably quickly in expanding their balance sheet and providing that liquidity. I think the issue here that we have really is though that, um, you know, going back to Benjamin Graham, you know, the the market is a is a, in the long term is a weighing machine, and you can't escape that inevitable economic gravity. So, th they'll continue to do what they can and, and probably expand 
their programs. Uh, but at the end of the day, the reality of all those jobs lost and all that contraction in the economy is going to mean significant bankruptcies and a significant curtailment in economic activity. And I don't think you can escape that. So, um, you know, we definitely uh, would, would recommend investors improve the quality of their portfolios just because I think in the long term, in the next six to 12 months, we'll start to see those insolvencies come through. And uh, it'll definitely be a busy time for the restructuring guys. Uh, and they'll, they'll be propping up their colleagues in the advisory firms who won't be doing many deals, I would suspect.